Hello viewers, welcome back to Mules of Tech Zone. This is the next video from Mules of for Advanced Playlist. So these videos are specifically for those who wants to excel their skills in MuleSoft in an advanced level and also helps you to crack the MCD level 2 certification and helps you to clear concepts for any kind of interviews that you are going to attend. So this particular session is all about some uh, things that I wanted to discuss about RAML, the API specification when you are creating and I want you guys to to understand how HTTP status code works okay sometimes we make very silly mistakes we know that you know um, it, it seems like the question was simple but there is something which we need to understand how it works in the back okay just for an example status codes and all uh, uh, basically when you are doing uh, any design okay if you are doing uh, design for your API uh, most of the folks they don't really add their uh, security things in your API specification they just directly go ahead in the API after deploying your application they do directly and apply client ID and secret even that can validate even without hitting the API but what if you are trying to define as a best practice if you are trying to define those uh, you know for example your API you are trying to apply client enforcement client ID enforcement policy which has client ID and secret so for that purpose what I'm trying to do is I'm creating a trait which the reason why I'm creating trait is to uh, you know reuse with multiple endpoints okay and there i am asking to pass client id and client underscore id and client underscore secret as a part of headers because i know that when i am applying the policy in api manager the client id and underscore client id and secret i am asking there to pass as headers so i am doing the same thing i am asking them to pass as headers and I am incorporating this trait using the is keyword here and with using the same name whatever name is there it should be here okay which means when you go to your endpoint for example you can automatically see that it is expecting client ID and secret as part of headers now when you are passing this when you are trying to you know send the request and pass the values okay then you will see a success response this is just an API specification so you are seeing 200 okay response okay now there might be some interview questions they might ask you that you are passing client id and secret what if you are not passing client id and secret values here i'm not disabling it or i can remove it here okay what if you pass client why what if you don't pass client id and secret values and send the request so according to our knowledge what we think is if you are not passing client id and secret values always we see either 401 or 403 depend okay 401 is something like the you know authorization error like if you're not passing client id and secret value then it is 401 or if you are passing some values which are not appropriate or inaccurate they will say like you are forbidden to use that so basically unauthorized or forbidden issues 401 or 403 we will see in the options and we will just blindly keep those options there okay but please make sure that here you are defining those details in api specification so shall we see what kind of status it will give now i'll send the request you can see you must be surprised it is giving 400 bad request there is no surprise it's just like you need to understand a little bit deeper okay if i am not passing this you know or if i am not defining this particular client id enforcement policy over in api specification i would have got either 401 or 403 directly when the consumer is sending the request because api manager policy is applied there and automatically those values you know it is validating at api manager level it is not even like hitting the our own api but it is failing at the uh, policy itself that is fine but here in the api the raml specification we are defining them to pass client id and secret under headers remember guys header is also part of a request okay it can so i i already explained you in the before videos like you know a request can be passed as part of payload as part of query params as a part of ura params as part of headers so when you are not passing any of the values whether you know if it is a header or query parameter or anything it always falls under bad request it's it doesn't fall under 401 or 403 okay that is the implementation error okay so here as we are defining as a part of header 
this particular api specification doesn't know about anything about policies first things first okay we are just mentioning about like just pass headers you can give abc also okay it doesn't care okay but we are defining something like you know headers should be with client id and secret so as we are not passing those values it comes under bad request and hence it is always 400 status codes and not 401 or 403 so if someone asks you a question about this or if you are facing this question in certification or interview please make sure that if they are defining any trades if they are defining any trades it's not necessary that it's uh, it has to be trades always but if they are passing it here in the you know headers uh, and if they are passing as a header this client and secret value and if you are not defining then it always comes under bad request 400 bad request if if at all you are uh, you know not passing anything you know ex explicitly in this api specification and if you are directly applying this policy in the api manager then it can come under 401 or 403 so this particular thing i want you guys to um, you know please concentrate on that particular stuff next thing is like again very simple so now i am passing like this 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 send it i got like okay because i didn't enable this enable enable and send the request i am getting 200 okay and uh, let's go to some you know i'm talking about status codes okay let's go to post method and try it okay so is there anybody okay there is no sample request but yeah it's very simple like as as simple as that and if you're trying to modify any url like adding wrong this thing you will get like you know 404 the resource not found so the order of the status code is always like how it is defined in the ram the intendation so first is the resource name whenever so first things it looks for when you whenever you're sending any request it looks for the resource name that is the first thing okay that is the first thing so if this is wrong it will give 404 next thing is if you are giving a wrong method is for post order details if you are giving the get method then it will give a uh, wrong method okay so, so next if you, any request it will give 400 bad request so it, the intendation or you know the level of uh, status codes follows the order the pattern from like this here okay so this is about the status code so please please be cautious and uh, this all things comes when you practice on your own okay just if you are watching this video it doesn't help please do try it out with different different scenarios you will be able to understand this and the next concept that i wanted to explain about raml or api specification is versioning of the apis <laughs> so whenever you are publishing something right you must have already seen like there are two things that it is asking one is the api version the other one is the asset version okay api version most of them they always keep v1 but if you think like you need two different versions you can keep v1 and v2 so that we will have two different apis with two different versions and this is the asset key version most of them what i have observed is they just keep randomly you know sending to 1.0.2 or 1.0.3 or their wish 1.1 just without knowing the uh principles again you know which are uh, used to name the versions okay so there is excellent documentation by mulesoft itself to change the raml version or change the version of an api asset okay there are some certain rules that you need to follow when you are publishing them with the different versions so in asset version we always have like three different kind of versions that is major version minor version and patch version again there is well documented thing here i will quickly say what comes under how is major version uh, you know defined minor version defined and patch version defined so they only give the give good example that like if there is an example if an asset version current version is 2.4.6 then its major version will become 2.x.x .x. means it can be 2.5.0 or 2.6.0 or 2.7.0 that is called the major version the second decimal here okay and if it is a minor version then this this place this place right uh, 2.4.x then the minor version would be 4.2.4.7 2.4.8 that is called the minor version and the patch version is using the same you know version number because like you know we are just doing some minor changes so it comes under patch version so when you want to use major version when you want to use minor version and all it depends upon here for example uh, changes required a new major version changes not requiring a new major version so 
ఫర్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్ రిమూవ్ అయిన ఏపీఐ ఎండ్ పాయింట్ చేంజింగ్ ఇన్ ద ఆపరేషన్ ఆర్ చేంజ్ ఇన్ ద రెస్పాన్స్ టైమ్ ఆల్ దిస్ కమ్స్ అండర్ ఎ న్యూ మేజర్ వర్షన్ ఓకే ఆర్ రిమూవింగ్ ఎగ్జిస్టింగ్ ఎలిమెంట్ ఆర్ యాడింగ్ న్యూ ఫిల్స్ ఆల్ దిస్ సో ఇఫ్ యూ గో టు దిస్ డాక్యుమెంటేషన్ యూ విల్ నో వెన్ టు ఇంట్రడ్యూస్ ఎ మేజర్ వర్షన్ అండ్ వెన్ టు యూ ఇంట్రడ్యూస్ ఎ మైనర్ వర్షన్ ఓకే దట్ ఈస్ ద స్టాండర్డ్స్ దట్ వీ ఆర్ ఆల్ ఫాలోయింగ్ సో దట్ ఇట్ విల్ బీ ఈజీ ఫర్ హెల్ టు అండర్స్టాండ్ అండ్ వన్ మోర్ క్రిటికల్ అండ్ ఇంపార్టెంట్ థింగ్ ఈజ్ ఏపీఐ వర్షన్ ఇన్ అప్లికేషన్ యూఆర్ఎల్ దేర్ ఆర్ డిఫరెంట్ ఏపీఐ వర్షన్స్ హియర్ అండ్ సపోజ్ ఇఫ్ దెర్ ఈస్ ఎనీ రిక్వైర్మెంట్ వేర్ uh your customer needs the same api in a two different version okay so how to handle them that is the important thing so it is always best suggested okay that you always define that particular api version in your base uri part okay how how to define a base uri here is like you can always choose like base uri something like this and you can always keep v1 v2 or something like that right so you can use base uri as the this thing so most of them what they do uh, most of them what they do is sometimes they think like they can change that particular uh, 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 you know api version at uh, implementation level or define the you know or defining at each level like v2 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 in every end point like v2 here or you know v2 here instead of doing that we can always define that in the base uri you can add a parameter for versions here i am hard coding it but you can always pass as a parameter like versions defining some variable called version so that whenever you are passing any value it, it will route accordingly instead of doing like instead of scaffolding your raml into your studio and making the changes by changing the flow names or you know by changing some stuff it is not recommended to do that because um, it requires i mean it's it is a doable thing like you know scaffolding the raml changing the api name flows or adding a query parameter manually all these are doable but the best thing to do is defining a parameter in your raml itself in the design center for the version so that you won't have to do kind of much work. again defining the version at each end point is a difficult task so always define at the base uri level and make use of it so so you will see different ways of coding the best way of coding is always this one so you have to always choose the best option in your certification exam also they will give you four options what is the best method to do so all four methods are correct but but they are asking for the best way to do so this is the best way with less code changes you will be able to add your api versions and you know with the same specification you can have multiple versions okay hope uh, this video help you to understand or clear some concepts uh, these are really important for your inter- interview perspective as well as the mcd level 2 certification perspective so hope uh, you enjoyed this session happy coding and see you in the next session